Hello, I'm Dan Alford. Welcome to the Art Specialties Weld of the Week. Hello, this is Dan Alford. Welcome back for the final episode in our series on TIG welding of aluminum. The point of this series was to show that sometimes beauty is only skin deep. You can have that perfect stack of dimes bead, but underneath you may have defects. In an earlier episode, we demonstrated that at little cost, you can do liquid penetrant inspection on your welds. This is a great process for finding small surface defects in a weld. In another episode, we demonstrated visual inspection, both on the final weld and on cross sections. You can learn a lot from the cross section, including whether you have sufficient root fusion. Today we move into destructive testing. Fillet welds are an interesting case. You can't make tinsels or sharpies out of a fillet weld, so the only test you can perform is a break test. This is easily accomplished with just a hammer. You can see here in the video we're breaking this weld. What we're trying to do is determine whether we have root fusion, which is harder than you might think. Actually being able to tie that root in on a fillet weld is extremely challenging, particularly with aluminum. In this case, the fillet weld passed. We did have complete root fusion and you can tell that by examining the cross section on the fillet break test. On our second fillet break test we have a weld that failed. By looking at the fracture surface of the weld you can see two things. One, there are some discontinuities in the weld and two, we failed to fuse the root. This weld fails on two counts. The fillet break test is a simple test you can perform in your own shop with just a hammer and as we demonstrated you can still learn quite a bit from it but typically wells are tested using the guided bend test. This is again something you can do in your shop if you have a hydraulic press and the right set of dies. The radius of the die and the thickness of the specimen are both critical. We're trying to induce a very specific amount of strain in the outer fibers of the part. If there are any defects in the well, they'll open up and become visible during the guided bend test. The guided bend specimen on the left passed. The guided bend specimen on the right failed. You can see that there were defects in the weld which opened up as we bent it around the corner. Not only are there some cracks, but there's some porosity which became visible during the testing procedure. This final part you can see is so bad that there was no reason for us to bend it. There would have been an immediate failure during the bend test. I hope you enjoyed our Weld of the Week series on welding aluminum. So many people will post pictures of their beautiful stack of dime welds, and I'll admit this does show workmanship, but what I want to know is what's underneath the surface. We've demonstrated to you several ways that you can actually test your welds in your own shop with a minimum of expense. I hope this was a benefit to you. We'll see you again on Weld of the Week. We look forward to posting new episodes of the ARC Specialties Weld of the Week. If you're one of the thousands of operators of ARC Specialties equipment around the world and you have a weld that you would like to showcase, please contact us. At ARC Specialties, we thrive on problems. Send us yours.